Welcome to our third video of Chapter 1. Today we are starting Section 4, which is Solving Absolute Value Equations. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to evaluate expressions using absolute value, and then we're going to solve absolute value equations. Today's video involves no calculator. So the first thing that we should probably do is recall what is absolute value. So you should have seen this in Algebra 1, but it may have been a while since you've seen absolute value. Absolute value just means the distance from zero. So how far is an object away from zero on a number line? The symbol are these bars. So we could take the absolute value of three. We could take the absolute value of negative five. We can take, take the absolute value of a thousand. It's all it's saying is how far are those numbers from zero? Now, can absolute value ever be negative? This is a no. Absolute value is a distance. So you never can be a, a negative distance. from zero. So it's, it doesn't make sense to say that you are negative three miles from the school. It doesn't make sense to say on a number line that a number is negative 10 units away from zero. Distance always has to be positive. Can absolute value ever be zero? Yes, it can. But when? So when would an object be zero units away from zero? It's only one case, and it's when you're standing on zero. Yes, this occurs when you're on zero. So the absolute value of zero is just zero. So if I'm standing on zero, I'm no units away from zero. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to evaluate. So example number one, it says evaluate for x equals 2. So first thing that I want to do is I want to substitute that 2 in. So I have 2 minus 3 times 2 plus 4. Okay, so absolute value works kind of like parentheses. So it's like there's parentheses here. So I have to do what's inside of that absolute value first. So I have 2 minus 3 times 2 is going to be 6. Okay, 2 minus 6 is going to be negative 4. Okay, now remember that this is a unit. So I'm not going to add the negative 4 and the 4 right now. Instead, I'm going to do the absolute value. Okay, so thinking, how far is negative 4 away from 0? Well, negative 4 is just 4 units away from 0. So the absolute value of negative 4 is 4, so I end up with 4 plus 4. 4 plus 4 is going to give me 8. So our final answer should be 8. Okay, example two is one for you to do on your own. So pause the video, complete this one on your own, and come back when you are finished, please. Okay, let's see how we did. So the first thing that you should have done is substitute that negative one half in. Okay, so we're going to remember that we have to do this absolute value first. So I'm going to look at that. So I have 4 multiplied by negative 1 half. So 1 half of 4 is 2. Because it's negative 1 half, I get negative 2. Oh, sorry, that should be a minus 3, not a plus 3. Okay, subtracting 6, that's like adding a negative. So I have negative 2 add negative 6, so that's going to be negative 8 in absolute value. Okay, don't do the 2 and the negative 3 yet. First I have to do the absolute value of negative 8. So how far is negative 8 away from 0? Well, it's 8 units away. So the absolute value of negative 8 just becomes 8. So I have 2 times 8 minus 3. Now 2 times 8 is going to give me 16 minus 3. 16 minus 3 is going to give me 13. So you should have gotten your answer to be 13. If not, hopefully you see what mistake you made. Okay, so that's evaluating absolute value. So I give you an expression, you substitute a number, and you tell me what your answer is. Now we're going to go to absolute value equations. So uh, equations where we have an equal sign. So flip the page. Okay, 
So there's four steps to solve an absolute value equation. So we're going to go through those steps as we solve a problem. So you see example three at the top. It's two times the absolute value of x minus 100 equals 20. So the first step is to absolute isolate the absolute value. So to get the absolute value by itself. So on our equation, we have a two on the left side. So I need to get rid of that two. It's two being multiplied. So to get rid of it, I'm going to divide by two. So on the left side, those twos cancel. And I'm left with the absolute value of x minus 100 equals 20 divided by 2 is 10. So that was my first step. My absolute value is alone. Then you have to write two equations. So if the absolute value is 10, that means I have some number that is 10 away from 0. If you think of a number line, if you start at 0 and you go to the right 10, you're going to land at 10. So I have x minus 100 equals 10. Now what happens if I start at 0, but I move 10 to the left on a number line? Well, I would get negative 10. So that's my other equation then. x minus 100 equals negative 10. Okay, this is the step that most students forget. So I don't care if you have to box it, bold it, star it, but do not remember this step. You're always going to have two solutions. You're going to have two equations. So now, in step 3, we're going to solve both equations. So I have x minus 100 equals 10. If I add 100 to both sides, I get x equals 110. Then I have x minus 100 equals negative 10. Again, add 100 to both sides. Negative 10, add 100 is going to be 90. So my two solutions are 110 and 90. There's one last step, and that's to check for extraneous solutions. So what I mean by that is substitute both solutions back in. to your original equation. Okay, so substituting in our first one, I have 2 multiplied by 110 minus 100 equals 20. So this becomes 2 times 110 subtract 100 is just going to be 10. The absolute value of 10 is 10. So I have 2 times 10 equals 20, so 20 equals 20. Now checking that 90. So I have 2 times 90 minus 100 equals 20. So 2 times the absolute value of negative 10 equals 20. Okay, the absolute value of negative 10, remember that that's positive 10. So negative 10 is positive 10 away from 0. So I got 2 times 10 equals 20, so 20 equals 20. Both solutions work. Now, you have to make sure that you check both of your solutions. Majority of time, the time, they're both going to work. But there are cases where one of the equations is not going to work, or one of the answers is not going to work, and that's called an extraneous solution. So you have to make sure that you check. Okay, so let's look at example four. Right now, I would like you to do example four on your own, please. So pause the video, complete example four, and come back when you are finished. Do not move on to example five. Okay, let's see how we did. First thing that you should have done is isolate that absolute value. So on the left side of the equation, we know we have a 2 and we have a negative 3. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I have 2 multiplied by y plus 4 equals 14. Then you should have divided both sides by 2. So I get the absolute value of y plus 4 equals 7. Okay, so you all should have done that. Um, one thing to note is the 2 is separate from the absolute value. So if you distributed that 2 in, that's wrong. You can never distribute into an absolute value. So that was step 1. Step 2, I need to write my two equations. 
So I get y add 4 equals 7, and then I get y add 4 equals negative 7. Now to solve, if I subtract 4, subtract 4, I get y equals 3. Subtract 4, subtract 4, I get y equals negative 11. Okay, and then my last step is to check both of these. So I have 2 multiplied by 3 add 4, subtract 3 equals 11. So I have 2 times the absolute value of 7, subtract 3 equals 11. So I have 2 times 7 minus 3 equals 11. So 14 minus 3 equals 11. Okay, first one works. Now I have 2 multiplied by negative 11 add 4 minus 3 equals 11. So negative 7 add 4 is going to, I mean negative 11 add 4 is going to give me negative 7. Absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7. So I get 2 times 7 minus 3 equals 11. So 14 minus 3 equals 11. And both work. Both check out. I cannot stress enough how important it is that you write two equations. What some students like to do is they only write one equation. So they write, okay, y plus 4 equals 7. And then they subtract 4, they get y equals 3. And they say, okay, that must mean negative 3 is an answer also. This does not work. You cannot solve one equation and then make your answer both positive and negative. You'll notice, instead of getting negative 3, we, we got negative 11. So you have to make sure that you write two equations. So hopefully that one went well. If you made a mistake, that's okay. It was the first one you did on your own. Let's move over and look at example 5. Okay, this is one that I would like you to do. So pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Remember to come up with two solutions and substitute them both in to check. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. First thing that you should have done was divide by negative 2 on both sides. So you get the absolute value of 3a equals 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. Okay, so here I'm betting most of you got 3a equals negative 3 and 3a equals positive 3. Okay, but let's just stop and think for a minute. This is telling me I have some number on the left side that's negative 3 units away from 0. We talked about previously, absolute value can never be negative. It doesn't make sense to have a negative distance. So this gives us no solution. So right back at this step right here, you could have said no solution, not even go on. It's not possible for absolute value to be negative because you cannot have a negative distance. If you didn't see that, that's okay. That was a tricky one. I was looking to trick you. But just keep that in mind. Absolute value is always positive. Okay, we have one more that we're going to do together. It's the absolute value of x plus 10 equals 4x minus 8. Okay, step one, isolate the absolute value. Well, nice thing, my absolute value is already isolated. Step two is write my two equations. So my first one is just as it looks. x add 10 equals 4x minus 8. Then I have x add 10 equals the negative of 4x minus 8 which ends up being negative 4x plus 8. Okay, so here are your two equations. So it's the same as what you did before. It's just tricky. You have to remember to change both the negative, both the 4x and to the negative 8 to be negative. So you have to make sure to multiply the entire right side by a negative. Right here is where I'm going to leave you to finish the problem. Come up with two solutions for x. So you're going to get x equals some number from the first equation. You're going to get x equals some number from the second equation. And then you need to check your answers. So this could be one of those cases where you get an extraneous solution, where you get a solution that doesn't work. So when you come to class tomorrow, we will be checking to make sure that you have both equations completed and that you checked your answers. Good luck.